Hello people from YouTube! Welcome to my channel. I wanted to make a video reaction of Speak Now Taylor's version. I decided to just uh, use the English language because it felt more appropriate uh, to for, for the video. So bear with me, I'm sorry if I'll probably say something stupid or something. Uh, just just know that English is not my natural language. I would go with Italian, but I, like I said, I felt more comfortable with English. Today's video is going to be uh, me reacting to Taylor's uh, version of Speak Now. I've known her since Red and I've been a fan since then and I'm pretty excited to actually listen to Speak Now in its entirety for the first time in 10 years because like I know some songs like most most of them are pretty much the ones that everyone knows because they are the most famous songs in Speak Now uh, so I'm pretty excited to get to the ones that I don't know and I didn't exactly know what to expect probably a mixture of country and rock country rock so yeah I'm I'm super super excited but first I think that a change of outfit is going to be necessary so yeah let's just change it I feel more like myself kind of like yeah more in my speak now era the violet t-shirt first track is mine i remember it only because of glee and and i think it's the only song they used of her in glee and i'm curious to listen to taylor's version of this song i know what to expect uh what to expect from this song is like a country feel to it let's dive into it and listen to mine taylor's version Working part time, waiting tables, left a small town, never looked back. I feel like this college thing and being a waiter, it's a thing that a lot of American people do. Like, a college being a waiter gives me a lot of movie feelings. It's already been cinematic. Like, the visual are crazy with her writing. Like, she's the queen of writing lyrics. You made a rebel of a careless man's careful daughter. Good job, Taylor. Am I wrong or she has a thing for the 2 a.m. hours? Like in, in their other songs, she mentions a lot 2 a.m. Um, so yeah, like it, it's something that she always had. I don't... I don't exactly remember because like like I said I didn't listen much to the older albums it, it's something that happened recently that I noticed all these things like unfortunately I didn't pay much attention to the lyrics that uh, she wrote because lyric didn't exactly matter I just wanted to understand what she said so that's why I read the lyrics but didn't pay too much attention to it uh, and I figured out that that's that's a big mistake with the years um i learned that and yeah it's something that i found out a lot in a lot of her songs like she has a thing for 2 a.m probably she never sleeps i wish i could be like her and be productive all the time i just started to realize how linked um her songs are to each other and the lyrics are pretty much linked too uh, and I didn't understand it before, so it's everything completely new to me. Nice twist, Taylor. I love the high notes. That was awesome, like completely different from the Glee version, which I expected it to be uh, because I remember it being super slow when Santana sing sung it in the episode. This version, of course, is so much better. I, re I vaguely remember listening to the 
stolen version. Um, so I just, I, I'm not sure I can compare the two, but it's an awesome starting of the album. Let's continue with Sparks Fly. Sorry for the weird lighting. It's the day after today, basically. The sky is dark outside, but it's still crazy hot. And if I were you, I would give this video a thumbs up just because I'm sweating wearing this t-shirt. I thought it would be less heavy, but like, I was so wrong. Let's do it. Can I say that this video, I'm watching the lyrics video, it's super cool how they used what I think is video from a concert and all the uh, fireworks give me a lot of um, 4th of July feel. I've never celebrated the 4th of July for obvious reasons. I mean, I'm, I'm Italian, but all these fireworks going on give me that uh, 4th of July uh, feel. Yeah, the mind can do that to you, like, forget to remind you something that you shouldn't do. There you go, the fireworks. There's a lot of uh, crazy hair movement going on here. I'm curious to know if she sang this in the Eras tour and did the same uh, hair movement uh, she did back then. It would be cool, ni a nice touch to, to the performance, I think. Sparks Fly, still one of my favorite songs. It, it gives you a really good energy and makes you want to do things. I'm someone that gets bored a lot and sometimes I need uh, a good kick to make my day start, for example, and this song is totally something I would go to. Back to December is next. I don't know if I'm ready for it. <laughs> Reference. From what I understood, really recently, honestly, because I've never listened to um, rumors or gossip uh, about Taylor Swift, this song is about Taylor Lautner. Um, and how she feels about breaking up with him. It's usually songs about people breaking up with her. This is the opposite. I'm excited. I know I said excited a lot in this video but already and it's like just three tracks but I'm excited to hear a new uh, version of this even if I'm not completely ready. A nice bathtub with the snow. It's cool. This piece right here, something that whenever I think about a song, uh, this this piece here, it's so always on my mind. I don't think I had listened to uh, Back to December that many times for it to be stuck in my brain. I find myself sometimes singing this song out of nowhere, so I, I guess that it stuck with me more than I thought it did. Correct me if I'm wrong, maybe just leave a comment uh, down below. But is she referring to the moment where Kanye West at the VMAs uh, got the microphone from her and told everyone that Beyonce had a better video? This was really beautiful. The visual with the bathtub in that room and the snow. I guess that after all she made it right, even after years. I've, I recently seen pictures on Instagram of Taylor Lautner going to her show with the with his wife, uh, which is also Taylor and I've seen the Spider-Man meme going on and that was really funny. Back for Speak Now, the song that gives the name to the album. <coughs> what the hell? <coughs> Dying. 
Oh, I'm gonna cut this. Speak now, the song that gives the name to the album. I remember this being a little a little different than what I thought it would be uh, when I listened to it for the first time 10 years ago. I always thought that the, the song that gave the, not the album the name would be more upbeat. I remember this being a little too slow. For, for that. I, I thought it would be faster. Honestly, this one is one of the songs from Speak Now that I uh, usually uh, listen to when it comes uh, on, on my iPod. It's not one of the songs that I s skip. I'm pretty curious about this. See if the music is the same or if they change it up a little bit. Probably not, but who cares? There's a lot of why in this video, of course. This bride must be super lovely. I can tell already. It's totally a wedding I would attend. Of course he wishes it was you. Everyone would wish it was you. Can you see it? Like, I totally can see it in my mind. Her coming in from the door and waiting there in the aisle with everyone looking at her in this awful way. Like, all the people invited thinking, what is she, what is she doing? It's basically a movie. Just, it's not a movie, it's a song. That's the power of Taylor Swift lyrics. Well, I have to say that if I were him, I would be glad she just showed up to, to say something because from what she said of the bride, she didn't sound that funny or nice. For this next song, I just wanted to say something before starting. Dear John has always been one of my favorite songs uh, from Taylor and I'm so excited to listen to this but first of all um, <clears throat> it's probably longer than I remember it to be and I wanted to listen to this song since Friday and today it's Wednesday so basically almost a week after the the, the album came out and it's only because I wanted to make the video I didn't listen to any of these songs and I spent my Friday afternoon going around in my city for like five stores to buy the album because I wanted a physical copy that I have here. I made it, I have it, and it's gorgeous. I love this cover and I can't wait to get the vinyl too. I, I waited for so long because I needed some time to make the video it was eating me from the inside not being able to listen to any of these songs especially this one I just couldn't wait to listen how different it is with a more mature voice I'm enjoying a lot honestly let's do it I can wait the the paper from school it's cool in the background and the handwriting Feels like a lot like her her handwriting. I don't know if it's her or not. Now that I was reading the lyrics, uh, the part where she says, "Don't you think I was too young to be messed with?" Reminds me for some reason of would have, could have, should have. My mind just linked the two things. If she were 19 here, how old was he? I know who this song is about, but how old was he when when she 
dated him. Never impressed by me acing your tests. What the hell? Who does that? This is my favorite part of the entire song. I don't know if I'm ready for this. Like for the entire thing. I love this part so much. I just... I'm not ready. How cool was that? Like, I have goosebumps everywhere. Everywhere. Well, yeah, you should have known. Like, I'm so glad she wrote this song. It's so beautiful. I love it. It's even better than than it used to be. I don't know, I'm probably too into this song to notice any changes. It was really good. I seriously got goosebumps like all over. That was so good. Oh, with the next one, it's Mean. I remember this song because I used to I used to listen to it a lot when I was in school because in that a uh, moment of time I didn't have nice days and had some problems in school that this song reminds me a lot of those times how it helped me to go on during my year you with your words like knives and swords and weapons that you use against me you have knocked me off my feet so country like it's crazy thing. country This is so cinematic. I think I said it already, but I'll probably say it over and over and over again. I can totally see this scene going on in a movie or in an episode from some TV show of this guy sitting at, at the bar waiting for the beer or some kind of alcoholic beverage uh, just talking about football and no one gives a shit about what he says No one is listening to him and he just rambles on and on about games that no one cares That was a ride. I enjoyed it so much. It was super funny love this song. I love this song. It's probably going to be the same thing for every single song I listen to because it's it's kind of hard to not like these songs. Next up is The Story of Us and again I love this song. I loved it and years ago and the the other times I got to listen to it. Speak Now for some reason was never one of the albums uh, that I listen to uh, very frequently. I felt super super hyped to listen to this. I don't know why. It just... I've been waiting for this moment since she said that she would release it and I I don't think I've ever had so much expectation from from this album as I have it now. Looks a lot 
not like a tragedy now. Next chapter. The end. It's always good. I have so much fun whenever I listen to this. Also, there was the... Uh, there were some pages where the that fish that she has on the guitar uh, was there. I just can't remember the name of the fish right now and it's annoying me. So if you know the name of that fish, uh, can you please tell me and help me remember it? Thanks. Next song is Never Grow Up which gives me a lot of Peter Pan vibes. We are starting uh, with the songs that I've never listened to before. Uh, actually, that's a lie, because I think I listened to this on my iPod the other day while I was on the bike, and th that was the very first time I've got to listen to this song, because I it was always a skip for me. I'm totally going to give it a try, because I want to listen to the entire album, so I'm not going to skip any song. That's so calming. It sounds so much as a lullaby. Car on the way to the movies and you're mortified your mom's dropping you off. Uh, at 14 there's just so much you can't do and you can't wait to move out. This is also a thing that I've seen so many times in multiple TV shows and movies. It's that don't want to, they don't want to be seen with their mom or dads uh, in the car while they're taking them to school, and they just they just ask them to drop them off like a block before the school so they can walk there and just not be laughed at you know how kids are they just uh they just have to laugh at you for whatever or stupid reason and that to that does a lot to people that are uh fragile Also, this is something that happens a lot. When you're a kid, you just want to grow up, be an adult, because you want to be able to to do whatever adults do. And then when you grow up, you just, you're just like, everything was better when I was a kid. This song was really, really sweet. Super nice, totally, like like I said, a lullaby, I can see kids falling asleep to this. It's going to be one of the new lullabies that mom are going to sing to their kids to put them to bed. That will be really cool, like a modern lullaby. I don't know if I would listen to this time and time again, probably yes, here and there, like if it comes up, maybe I'll listen to this and not going to skip it again, but I don't know if it's one of the songs that I that I say I can't wait to get to it and listen to it again. It's nice, sweet, but... Mm, I don't know, not my favorite. This next song is probably the most favorite song Ever. I have a feeling that Enchanted is one of the fan favorites of all times. Sparkles, red, red, blue, and purple. And then again, super young Taylor from some concert. And what in the background sounds a lot like an organ, but it's probably just a piano or probably a violin, I don't know. Fun fact. 
but I um, I learned how to say linger because of this song. Store dress. This is so cool. I have goosebumps and I'm about to cry. <coughs> Probably my favorite lyric video. It was really, really cool and crazy how they they changed from younger Taylor to the older Taylor. I I didn't expect this song to make me feel like crying and I totally didn't expect it. Thank you Taylor Swift for almost making me cry. Next is Better Than Revenge. This one is one of the songs that I'm I'm going to listen for the first time kinda today. Now go stand in the corner and think about what you did. My is Shattering Glass. I remember some of the lyrics of this song though. <laughs> Tell her, Taylor. He was a moth to the flame, she was holding the matches. Am I wrong or she changed it? I remember it different. Uh, I think this part was different. But I'm not 100% sure, so if you know it, just please tell me. Looks at me like I'm a trend and she's so over it. Reminds me of uh, Willow when she said, I come, best, I come back stronger than a 90s trend. That's so true. Whenever something happens to her, she's ready. Like it, it feels like she lives with uh, with a pen, like stripped to her hand, probably like with with the tape. Uh, she just has it there, not even in the pocket or in the bag or whatever. She just has it taped to her hand. So whenever ha whenever something happens, she she just writes. It was so cool. I didn't remember it at all. Just some parts here and there, like I said. I think that she changed some lyrics. I said I'm not too sure. Yeah, it was a really, really cool song. Experience it live would be really great. Here we are again with one of the songs that are... that I don't know. And it's Innocent. This is seriously the first time ever listening to this. Who is this song about? I have no idea. Like, like I said, it's the first time listening to it. It could be about someone that did something bad to her. Wait. Is this about the same guy that Dear John is about? Like, was he 32 when she, when she dated him and she was 19? Is this song about him again? I don't know how to feel about this song. I feel like it's a song that she wrote to, at least to me, it feels like um, it's a song that she that she wrote for someone that did something bad to her. Like like she says at some point, "Who you are is not what you did." 
feels a lot like she's forgiving that person for what they did to her probably like same as never grow up is probably one of the songs that I would that I wouldn't pick on purpose to listen to it's cool but not my favorite I'm back have to take a break because it's seriously crazy hot in here I have to I have to record this with the light on in front of me, the light above me on and the door to the balcony closed, the door to my room closed because they are, uh, there are people working uh, in the building in front of mine and this, the, the noises would be crazy so I, I'm basically in a sauna right now so please leave a like for this On to this next I'm so excited for this and I think this song is probably a little underrated. Um, I love it. It's one of my favorite again. The background is already cool, kind of scary with this forest, uh, this path in in a forest with the trees with no leaves and uh, light lightnings going on the dark sky almost almost like it's about to almost like a, a storm is about to come i have a feeling that older older taylor is easier to understand when she sings at least for me uh like i said before i'm not i'm not english i'm italian and i i feel like i had problems before when I was younger to understand the lyrics uh, because I, I'm, I'm stubborn and I wanted to understand it just by listening to it but I didn't have the capabilities to do that and I feel like that growing up and I, and getting better with the language um, I, my brain started to understand the lyrics even without reading them and just listening to it and it feels like it's easier to understand when uh, someone sings. This song is perfect. This is the perfect song to listen to when you're out walking and the rain is coming down and the weather is awful and the sky is gray and cloudy and really really cold outside and, and you're just walking around your neighborhood or whatever you have your headphones on and you just go around walking and this is totally the song that i would listen to in that weather we reached last kiss Track number, I don't know, I had to check. 13, of course. I remembered it being longer. I thought this was longer than Dear John, but apparently Dear John is longer than this one. Let's go to Last Kiss. Are we ready for this? Probably not. The Rain is probably one of my favorite and I just like how it smells when it rains and the leaves are on the, on the ground and they are all wet and it smells like autumn so much it doesn't matter what season you're in it just smells like September in general July 9th I I'm a little late to this, but happy last kiss day. The world ever thought about writing a song about their last kiss. There are a lot of songs about first kisses, but I've never heard a song about last kisses. She's just a genius and I'm still I'm still amazed how they still didn't call her to write the script for a movie. Bridge. I 
liked it. It was really good. It was a really, really good song. Also, um, the song gives me a lot of uh, high school prom vibe. The song that the, the, the you would put on for kids to dance to their slow dance, probably, they would probably hope for a better night, I think. Like, probably not hoping for their last kiss, but probably hoping for their first in most cases cases I guess I don't know uh, we, we don't have the the we don't have the prom here in Italy I don't know how it works but I don't know uh, feels a lot like grazie Anyway, feels a lot like one of the songs that you would hear uh, in a prom, at least for me. This song is Long Live, and I've been waiting for the past, I don't know, mm, a little over an hour for, for this song. And I'm so happy I've got to see on Instagram uh, how she sang it to... Uh, I don't, I don't remember where she was uh, last week uh, in one of her concerts and I, I can't even imagine how cool it is to see her live. I've never seen her live in my life and it would be so good to get to, to do that. You held your head like a hero children I have I, I have a niece and whenever I have the chance to I tell her about her and I make her listen to her songs so that's funny thank you Taylor for making me cry again uh, okay I need to blow my nose. Why is this happening? What the fuck? What the hell? Taylor! Damn it! Damn you! <laughs> that was so good! So good! That, that's all. That I can... I don't... I have no words. Like, that was perfect. Second to last song, Hours. And it's probably the shortest one out of all of them. And again, this is another one of the songs that I've never listened to. Um, I have no idea what to expect about this. It's a nice visual though. That's really nice. This is a really nice song. And I love the riddles that you speak. And she she's talking about riddles. Like she is a living riddle. This love is ours. 
nice song, happy. Again, not, not one of my favorite. I listened to it. I'm happy I did. I'm happy I finally got to listen almost to the entire thing because we have one last song. I think that this is going to be one of the songs that go to the nice but not gonna listen to it multiple times songs. The song for this video is Superman and it's also the last song uh, from the regular version of the CD. Um, next up are going to be the Vault trucks and again I, I feel like this is something that I said a lot. This is another one of the songs that I've listened to once and never got to it again. Um, so I, I don't exactly remember how it is in the original version or the stolen version. I'm excited to listen to this. I'm, I'm more excited for the vault tracks. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's listen to this last song. I, I remember a little of the melody, but that's all. I don't know, it reminds me a little of uh, uh, Picture the Burn, probably. I'm not sure, but yeah, it, it reminds me of some songs that was on Fearless. Even if I still didn't listen to Fearless Taylor's version, sorry, I know, I know, it's like not one of my favorite albums, but I'll, go, I'll get to it, I'll, I'll listen to it. Future reference to reputation. It's impossible to forget about you, Taylor. <laughs> impossible. That was a nice song. Uh, catchy, totally catchy. Probably going to stick in my brain for the rest of the day. Uh, so, I don't know, like, I have contrasting feelings, uh, like, I liked it, but at the same time it's not one of my favorite again. I probably have to get, get to it and listen to it again uh, to have a better idea of what I think about this. Okay, we got to the end. We made it, listened to 16 songs. They were amazing. I loved it. It was a nice ride. I can't wait to get to the Vault track, which is another six songs. Uh, I'm going to do the Vault tracks in another video. Uh, so if you want to watch and know what I think about them, uh, just maybe subscribe to the channel. That would be cool, would, would help me. Uh, continue with the videos and leave a like if you liked it and leave a comment and just let me know if there are things that I didn't catch uh, because like I said I'm not one f I'm not into gossip much and these are like 10 years old gossip so I I'm not sure uh, I there are probably going to be so many videos and theories and stuff like that uh, going on around in in the internet. So like um, Let me know if I missed something um, Thank you for sticking with me so far. It was nice to be with you and See you in the next video. Bye